President Obama's speech last night about the U.S. response to Syria addressed concerns about al-Qaeda's role in Syria. Many of you have asked a broader question. Why should we get involved at all in a place that's so complicated and where, as one person wrote to me, those who come after Assad may be enemies of human rights? It's true that some of Assad's opponents are extremists. But al-Qaeda will only draw strength in a more chaotic Syria if people there see the world doing nothing to prevent innocent civilians from being gassed to death. As the United States once again considers military intervention in the Middle East, we look at how lessons learned from 9-11 may be applied to Syria. Joining me to discuss the issue are Rick Epps, retired SDSU political science professor with an expertise in terrorism, and Ibrahim Al-Marashi, assistant professor of Middle East history at Cal State San Marcos. Welcome. Thanks, uh, Ibrahim, how strong is al-Qaeda today compared to what they were like when they attacked the U.S. in 2001? I'll just use a rough analogy. Just like Starbucks started out as a small cafe in Seattle and then became a global brand, that's what happened to al-Qaeda. Uh, just after the 9-11 attacks, al-Qaeda was confined to Afghanistan. And the attacks pushed it into Pakistan. And from there, the idea of al-Qaeda became a global franchise that took root in uh, the North Africa, Yemen, Somalia. And the al-Qaeda he's referring to in his speech is al-Qaeda in Syria. So what was a confined group has now become kind of a Middle Eastern franchise. With, so with cells that we've heard about kind of all over the world. Exactly. Rick, what role does al-Qaeda um, al believe to have when it comes to the uh, civil war in Syria? Well, this is part of the question that we have is we know that they are actively involved uh, in part of the Free Syrian Army, one of the segments of the Free Syrian Army. We know that they're also affiliated and also influencing other militant groups. Uh, and as long as you have this uh, chaos, then al-Qaeda has greater traction to be able to uh, gain more, more people to, to its cause because they are the ones who are providing assistance and money and aid to those who are displaced. And that becomes a bigger problem, because seeing the growth of al-Qaeda in Syria as a result of the chaos that's ensuing at this moment. So you're going to see a continued growth of al-Qaeda. Uh, we don't know exactly how big, but we do know there is a definite influence uh, in this, in this uh, crisis. Well, Ibrahim, President Obama addressed concerns about unintended consequences of military intervention, uh, including uh, terrorist groups. What have we learned from the Iraq and Afghanistan wars on unintended consequences that may influence what our response should be to Syria? Well, from the 2001 Afghanistan war, the unintended consequence was that al-Qaeda became this you know, group that has now branches throughout the Middle East. The intended consequence was destroy al-Qaeda. The unintended consequence, it made it a global uh, entity with cells around the world, but also with branches that are taking active parts in, active parts in conflicts, including in Syria. Do you uh, think, or I should ask you, how has U.S. intelligence changed about weapons of mass destruction, including chemical weapons? How is that different from the intelligence that we had when we went into the Iraq war and the Afghanistan war? Well, I find interesting this time around is that the Obama administration is making the intelligence it has unavailable to the public. Mm -hmm. In 2003, we were able to scrutinize the intelligence because Powell made you know, his uh, argument in front of the UN. Mm -hmm. He showed the intelligence. He played the intelligence for the world. To this day, we don't know what exactly, what kind of intelligence is the Obama administration acting upon. Well, Kerry certainly uh, announced uh, some of that intelligence, and we've seen video reports uh, with sources. So there's a little bit of that that visually we can see. But let me um, ask Rick about this. Uh, in a recent interview with a French news organization, Syrian President Bashar um, al-Assad mentioned the 9-11 attacks and said that if the U.S. attacks Syria, that we should be prepared in this country for retaliation. How big of a threat do you think that really is? Uh, I think it's a pretty bellicose statement, uh, not because of the possibility that it could happen, but it won't happen as a result of what takes place in Syria. Uh, th what I mean by that is Syria's capability in terms of you know, threat to the United States is fairly minimal. The greater threat would be al-Qaeda, but again, because al-Qaeda is so decentralized now. Having said that, 
it, it really is just, um, you know, I think when I look at these things, I, I kind of chuckle a little bit because this is his way of pontificating because he's got Russia behind him, so he thinks he can make little, much more grandiose statements than he really has the teeth to really do. Uh, the consequences would then escalate to something he would not ever want to be able to live with. So, and let me end with that with you, Ibrahim. What do you think of that? Do you think it's a, a credible threat that maybe engaging in other countries might actually have some impact here? I, I don't think it's uh, a credible threat on par with the scale of attacks that happened on 9-11. I, I, I think in his terms of retaliation, he might hurt American interests in the Middle East rather than hurting the homeland itself. All right, Professors Rick Epps and Ibrahim Al-Marashi, thanks so much. Good pleasure.